Okay, so, uh, let's get on with the wire. Um, this here is a length of ribbon cable. Now, uh, ribbon cable, you can purchase it at pretty much any sort of uh, electronics, um, outlet. Uh, electronic, um, anywhere that sells electronics. Um, I, this came off of a larger, um, a larger roll of, um, of ribbon cable. Now, um, what I like about ribbon cable is that it's small and that uh, it's uh, this this particular type has a lot of uh, filaments running inside of the cable. So um, let's take out one of the um, one of these uh, apart and let's check out the inside. Okay, so uh, we got our wire uh, strippers and wire cutters here. So we're going to strip off the ends of the wire so I can show you what's inside. Okay, bam, there we go. So um, if you can if you can see this, uh, there are many, many filaments of fine wire inside of this, uh, this particular um, ribbon cable. Now that there are other ribbon cables where they uh, is only a single piece of wire running through it, and I like using these because um, the smaller the, the filaments inside of the cable, the the easier the electrons can flow um, and can pass through the wire. So um, if you have a single piece of uh, of wire running inside of this. Um, if that wire happens to short out or go bad, then you're pretty much done. But uh, since there are, let's say, 15 filaments in here, if one of them goes bad, you have 14 more. And the um, it's easier to tin. Uh, here are our helping hands. And this little transformer guy here, he is, um, he is very useful to use. Um, uh, people use them in small electronics uh, to hold uh, circuit boards, to hold little uh, computer chips in place while uh, you solder things. You can also hold wires and things of that nature. Okay, so uh, what we're going to go over next is uh, tinning wire. Now, tinning wire uh, involves um, getting the bare wire. Um, you have to expose the bare wire and then you have to use uh, solder and um, you would essentially melt the solder into the wire so that the wire is nice and soaked up with the solder so that when you do want to make a connection from a, make a connection on the circuit board with wire um, the solder flows into the circuit board so that it makes a nice little attachment let's, let's start with this okay here we go so uh, what I like to do is that I like to uh, hold the soldering iron underneath the wire and then I like to feed the solder onto the tip of the soldering iron into the wire. So let's uh, let's try this. Okay, those are really awesome um, solder iron fumes that you do not want to breathe in or get in your eyes. Okay. Here we go. We just tinned the tip of our of our uh, our wire, and if you can tell, um, it looks really shiny at the tip, and that is where the solder melted into the tip of the uh, the wire. And um, now you can uh, essentially take this tip and you can solder with the soldering iron into a circuit board, and this would make a nice nice tight connection. There will be parts of this of the tutorial where um, you'll be needing to attach um, two different types of wires together. So um, what I like doing, the technique I like to use, is I like to use this technique called crow footing. Now crow footing involves um, taking both wires, stripping the ends off of them, and what you want to do is you kind of want to flare out the um, the wires into three uh, equally proportioned sections or as equally as you can get it and uh, you kind of want to twist the ends so that they stay together okay you want to do this with uh, with both of the wires so there's section one and here's section two and section three is left over, so we're gonna just kinda 
and I twist each each section so that they stay um, formed up. So now that you have uh, both of your wires um, split up into into three sections, you want to uh, bring them together in such a way that um, the wires are. Uh, you want to bring them together in such a way as uh, to um, the wires don't touch each other when you bring them together, but they kind of grasp around each other like a weird handshake, and you kind of want to close the ends on themselves on each side, so that um, the end that closes on the left side is from the right wire, and the close the end that closes on the right side is from the left wire. Okay. Now, once you've closed the ends, you want to back out a little bit, grasp the ends together, and twist everything. Okay. Now, after you twisted everything, um, it should look similar to this, and you just want to solder the joint in between there. Okay, where that is, and you should get a really good, a really good connection. Okay, so I've gone over um, safety, I've gone over uh, the use of a soldering iron, and I've gone over uh, some basic uh, things that you need to know for wiring uh, for when you start working on your Game Boy. The next set of videos I'm going to be working on for you guys is the modification of a DMG-01 Game Boy and a Game Boy Color. So stay tuned for those. I hope all of you are having a really good holiday season out there, and uh, thank you for watching. Remember, go out there and do great things.